functions. And really, this is just simply, it's an application of sets. All right, so we have sets, but I'm going to look at a very specific type of set. <clears throat> and this specific type of set is going to end up being something that we call a function. And we're going to start off with this. We're going to start off with one with what's called a relationship. In specific, in terms of relationships, if I would consider the cross product, which is the set of every possible n-tuple, So the cross product is what are if I have a bunch of sets, the cross product is collect every n tuple that could ever exist between these sets. How many n tuples exist is just simply the product of how many elements of each. So if I have three chairs, two students, and five books, then you would say pick a chair, pick a student, pick a book. Well, three times five times two. We get 30. Those are 30 possible n tuples that would ever exist. So that's every way of ever forming a triple if I would have three. If I would have five sets, five tuple. How many five tuples would exist and thus write them all? Now, on the other hand, what I call a relationship, or in particular, it's called an n ary relation, is simply any subset of these possible n-tuples. So I go through there and I say, OK, of the 30 things that would exist for chairs, students, books, I'm going to take some of them. So what am I doing? I'm forming triples between a chair. I'm going to say, this student gets this chair, which gets this book. That's one relationship, right? And so the idea, is, it's really good to mention this. So like, it is a relationship, right? We're saying, how are these things related? I mentioned before in class how chairs, students, clothes, books, phones, right? There is a relationship of some sort between those sets that is represented in this room. And I could write them all down as tuples, or I could just simply try and describe what this relationship is. Now, because this is too hard, the, the describing a relationship, we're trying to find a rule. Finding the rule to represent an n area relation is, you know, really difficult. It's really hard. So let's simplify it. So we move on to the next type, a binary relation. A binary relation simply says that if I took A cross B and formed any ordered pair AB such that A is in A and B is in B, I go from n tuples to only ordered pairs. So I don't want to have a lot of sets that are going to be, what's the relationship between sets? What's the relationships between humans and then schools and cars and what's your favorite band? All right, too complicated. Fine. Let's do humans and schools. Right? So we can just take two things. How are people related to schools? Did you go to the school? Is it your favorite school? Are you going to wear their colors? Or, you know, what? So that forms a relationship. But if I only talk about two things, this binary relation just says, all right, two sets. Notice now it's a little bit easier to talk about you know, what would the relationship be. I could have, so any subset of A cross B is a binary relationship. And I can use particular words. We normally use things like A will be called the domain. B will be called the codomain. There's only two, so we can give them names. Right? If I have a bunch of sets, what would we call them? I don't know. It's too hard to work with. 
But if I have two, I can say domain, codomain, because they work together with one another. Um, it's also easier to find a rule to represent the binary relation. Now, what, what could be a possible rule if we would look at, OK, let's limit ourselves to people who like um, Wichita State, people who like K-State, people like KU, and that's my pairing. I take the person in the school that they picked. Could you think of kind of a possible rule that would cause that pairing? Maybe where they live, right? Maybe they went there. Maybe somebody they know went there. Maybe they just watched an advertisement on TV and decided that that's who they're going to say, I, that's what I like. Maybe they're going to watch a game and say, that was exciting. I like that team, right? The relationship, though, is kind of difficult to talk about. But because there's only two things, people and schools, we can start to think about what that relationship might be. But it seems a little, still a little bit more complicated, so let's narrow it down further. And let's talk about functions. Nary relations are the big thing. A binary relation is an nary relation. See how it's a subset. What's a function? A function is a binary relation, except I'm going to put extra restrictions upon this. So it's still just a relation. Too complicated to work with, so let's narrow it down. And it's still it's a set of ordered pairs. Same as a relation. A binary relation is just a set of ordered pairs, except we have the following. So such that. Exactly one element of B is assigned to each element of A. There's two features here. So I have sets of ordered pairs, and you can have things like this. OK, this kid likes Wichita State, this kid likes K-State, and this kid likes KU because he likes Kansas schools. So it has him being mapped to all three schools. And then you have another kid that says, I hate them all. So he's not in my relation, right? He's not actually being mapped to any one of those three schools. What's a function? A function says both of those things are bad. The first, if you map, right, you go to one. If a student says, I like all three schools. No, one. You go to one, right? That means exactly one of the elements. So if B was schools and A was students, you get one school you like. If you like more than that, no, that's bad. You pick one. The second is each element of A. So the student over here that says, I hate all three, the answer is no. You got to like one. Another example would be students to chairs. If A was students and chairs was B, so you are, the students are the domain, the chairs are the codomain. All right, that's a relationship. If people were standing in this room, it's a relationship. If somebody hoards five chairs, they're all mine, that's a relationship. On the other hand, it's not a function. For a function, everyone must sit. That's the each. Only one, you get one chair. You don't get to put your feet on two chairs and have your arms on other two chairs and then put all your books and stuff on another chair. Right? We don't get to do that. Right? You get to have one chair. My favorite example on this one is usually it's like kind of dark humor. It's like, OK, we line up all the teachers. Everybody gets a gun. right? And what's the rule? Everybody has to shoot. right? What can't you do? No trick shots. I don't like Mark. I don't like that guy. It's like, no, no, you get one of us. right? It's like, I don't want to shoot. You have to. right? That's just this thing. Maybe they want to go to paintballs. So everybody else is like, that's too dark humor. That's fine. It's always really good to use those examples after I give an exam. It's like, I don't like Mark. OK. What if everybody doesn't like Mark? That's a function. 
right? As long as the rules are you, not me. The codomain isn't the restriction, it's the domain. Everybody must do something. Everybody must sit down. And you only get one, right? It's the restriction is upon you. So those are our functions. Now, functions themselves, since they're rather interesting, they have lots of applications. So what are some notations that we have to worry about? So we've restricted them. So what are some visual representations and some others? Well, normally we would write like this. If A is an element of A and B is an element of B, A is my domain, B is my codomain, uh, little a will be called a pre-image and b is called an image and if we use functional notation it looks like this f of a is equal to b this is my rule f is my rule f always maps things out of the domain into the codomain so we usually use lowercase letters to represent the rule itself. Capital A is the domain. It's mapping things to the codomain. Uh, I usually write if a, I'm dealing with a single person, single student, single object, f of A equals B. B is where you've gone. You've been mapped to it. That means it's an image. And who gets mapped? The pre-image, because that's the thing before the B. So we could write them like this. We could also visualize this to say, here's A, here's B. Look, F maps A to B. We can also say things like A, B is an ordered pair that is, is within my function. We could also write it like this. These are all A's. These are B's. There's A, there's B. Hey, look, there's A, B. All of these things are ways of talking about this function. This in particular is called functional notation. Is that f times a? No. It's a rule f operating on element a. f of a is normally how we read that. Uh, this is a good example of issues with mathematical notation. Normally when we write things, there's things like this, like 1 plus 2. This is called infix notation. You put the operator in the stuff it's working on. If you put it out in front, that's called prefix notation. I'm going to add what? 1 and 2. On the other hand, if you put it at the end, that's called postfix notation. I'm going to take 1 and 2, and then I'm going to add it. So binary operators, it works like this. Now, when we deal with uh, normally on functional notation, if I write it like this, if I put the thing that I do to before what it does, that's called what? That's prefix. But on the other hand, if I put it in the middle, that's called infix. Now, what do we normally do? We normally write infix in most of our stuff, but our functional work is all of a sudden prefix. So your notation is a confusing mixture of the two. You'll notice in programming languages that becomes difficult, so you might see things like this. Take a number. What do I want to do to that? Apply the sign function. That way you take the object and then op operate on it. That is also called, if I only have a unary, it's written in this way. So how, how many people have done like Python and they've seen things like functional notation goes after the operator, the, uh, the thing that you're going to work on. Do, stating what you do after you write the elements is usually a better way of doing it. This will be important when we get into discrete two. So we'll talk about prefix, postfix, infix, notation, and traversals through trees and graph theory. In the end, these are the things that we work with. We have all these terminologies for it. Uh, we need to be representing things. We could also do it like this. Take the entire set A, take the entire set B, and I have little a, and then I have little b, and then my f goes this way, and so this would allow me to do that. And so entire functions themselves, so if I had an example, 